Agnes Calamard is the Secretary General of Amnesty International, a human rights defender with decades of experience. She's headed up the organisation since 2021. She's now appeared on the BBC's Hard Talk, where the question was whether Amnesty's influence was waning. Soon, the conversation turned to Israel, where Calamard was asked this. Is it representative of your impartiality to consistently call Israel an apartheid state? It's uh, representative of the fact. You know, apartheid is, of course, blatant, out-and-out systemic racism. So you're, in essence, mm -hmm. saying Israel is a racist state. Yes. The state of Israel is practicing a crime against humanity of apartheid against the Palestinian people. We have investigated uh, those violations for four years. Uh, we've uh, produced this report in uh, February 20 last year uh, on, uh, on, the, on apartheid, mm -hmm. calling on uh, the, the state of Israel well, to not, dismantle not, To be fair, it. not just one report, many reports uh, accuse Israel of systemic apartheid in everything from the operation of its security forces in the occupied territories to its more recent use of surveillance technologies. Yeah. You characterize it consistently as apartheid. Uh, but listen to the impact your reports have had inside Israel. For example, former senior figure in the government there, Yair Lapid, he says, Amnesty doesn't call Syria, where the regime's murder half a million of its own citizens an apartheid state or Iran or other murderous regimes around the world. It is only Israel. Look, uh, a, we, this is not the first time Amnesty International has used apartheid. We've also demonstrated uh, apartheid in the context of Myanmar. We have certainly denounced the massive crimes against humanity committed by the Syrian governments. But the fact that we are criticizing and denouncing uh, the policies, laws and practices mm. of the Israeli government does not amount to anti-Semitism. Of course, anti-Semitism must be denounced. Of course, Amnesty International will and does denounce it. That was a pretty definitive answer to the question. But it wasn't enough for the host who wanted to talk about Israel a little bit more. We started this interview talking about the many problems around the world. We could have mentioned specifically Myanmar or Ethiopia or a whole host no, of others. Picked, you picked. I did not pick. No, no. You picked. So I'm just saying, when yeah. you consider the amount of resource, the amount of time that mm -hmm. you devote to Israel-Palestine, do you think it is proportionate to the problems that we see in so many other parts have, of the world? Have you, have you, have you, have, has your producer looked at our reports on Myanmar, how many we produced over the last few years, far more than we did on, on Israel. No, uh, you know, we are focusing on Israel at uh, uh, apartheid because this is a massive human rights violation that must be denounced. I was in Israel myself to launch this report. I, I have to tell you, I have never been in an environment where I confronted so much hopelessness and the absurdity of, the, of, of how apartheid is uh, is worked worked itself in the context of the uh, of, of of the occupied territories and and um, and Israel is mind boggling. All right. Well, look, look, you, you know, you, I mean, I you, just you've made that point. Let's move on because well, we don't have much time left, and we okay. don't want to just focus on particular countries. I mean, how embarrassing is that? You've got a host who has picked the topic of conversation, and then he says, "Oh." Have we spent too much time talking about Israel? Well, if there wasn't more time spent on Myanmar or Ethiopia, that's because you didn't ask about it. And this is a classic response towards anyone who talks about Israel. Why don't you talk about these other countries? But we do. You just don't get mad about it. It has an entirely different level of sensitivity. When I talk about the UAE and the joint airstrike with Saudi Arabia on Yemen, one of the most grave humanitarian crises on the planet right now, I don't have people denouncing me as Islamophobic for doing so. So you can't cause an explosion every time someone talks about Israel and then goes, oh, this is getting a lot of prominence. It's entirely driven by the response. Maurice, why does British media seem to give people who point out Israeli apartheid a harder time than the Israeli government itself? This isn't just someone randomly spouting things that she's come up with. She's, 
She's the head of Amnesty International. The way that interview that we just watched was conducted was that was quite appalling. I mean, she would be, uh, I think, within her rights to sort of, as you say, come on, we're going to ask you about this stuff. And now we're going to uh, criticise you because you're always talking about this stuff that we've just asked you about. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. Of course, when the BBC has given representatives of the Israeli government a hard time, or in this case, a former representative of the Israeli government a hard time, they were absolutely deluged by complaints and they ended up caving, backing down and apologising. That's something we discussed on this show and we'll put a link to that video in the description. 